Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's installment of the Blossoming of Awareness. I apologize for the strange lighting and ambiance. I'm in an airport hotel, which I've never stayed in before. One never knows, does one. So they have gone with a purple lighting theme. <laughs> So let's get started with verses 20 and 21 of Viranatha's very beautiful, very important text, the Swabodha Manjari, or Blossoming of Innate Awareness. So I'll just first read the Sanskrit um, to verse 20. Agrahyam indriyam shunyam, swatman yeva praliyate, praline indriya vrittes, tukaivalya bhudodayaha. Okay, so that means when the sense faculties have nothing to grasp and are therefore empty. They dissolve into one's self alone. When the activity of the senses has dissolved in this way, the joy of liberation naturally arises. So let's just talk about context for a moment. So we had these beautiful... Uh, there's the verse in your um, comments section. So we had these uh, verses on sensual dharanas, which you'll remember, from verse 13 through 16. Um, well, and also 18 it was part of that too. And now he's moving into these non-sensual <laughs> meditations, so really, this verse and the following verse could be considered as, or understood as, a form of pratyahara, or a version of pratyahara, which, of course, is the yogic practice of pulling the energy of the senses inward and really directing attention internally. So let's note, then, that doubtless Viranatha expects that we've practice the sensual dharanas for several weeks or months before we get into these um, more sort of shunya or void focused, um, spacious emptiness focused meditations. So having satiated the senses, we're now ready to go inside and merge with and, and, and simply be in pure consciousness, for lack of a better term, formless awareness. So let's note this very important tantric principle that we don't get in the Yoga Sutra of Patanjali and similar sources, which is that we should actually feed the goddesses of the senses. We should worship, propitiate, and nourish the goddesses of the senses through these sensual dharanas through meditation on the beautiful in all five senses, as we previously discussed. And only then are the senses ready to merge into the inner space of pure awareness. So those sense goddesses need to be satiated before they're ready to uh, sort of merge with the bhairava consciousness, if you will, at the center. So that's a really important principle right there. Okay, so let's look at the verse again. He says, when the sense faculties have, have nothing to grasp and are therefore shunya, empty, spacious, open, clear, you know, shunya is very difficult to translate in a single word, and uh, certainly in Buddhist literature, it'll always be translated as empty. 
And I think that's a problem to sort of cling to that to that single translation because it also means spacious, open, clear, um, unparticularized. <laughs> so anyway, when the when the sense faculties are are in that condition, spacious, open, and clear, having nothing to grasp, nothing more to grasp, because these goddesses of the senses have already been fully satisfied. Then they are, those sense energies, those sense faculties are able to dissolve, praliete, they dissolve into one's own self, swatmani. And here, again, we're not taking self as a sort of reified construct, but rather sort of simply the core awareness um, of, that you are. So in terms of the energy body, it's the central channel. Okay. Um, the central channel, of course, is the abode of awareness per se, the, the fundamental awareness of your own being, um, the Atma Bhava. And that fundamental awareness, that, that sense of your own being, consists of consciousness presence, quietly joyful consciousness presence, uh, Satchit Ananda, or Satchidananda. Uh, that's a particularly Vedantic phrase, but it's very, the, the idea is very, very similar. Um, being consciousness bliss, meaning this sort of joyful conscious presence. That That's what you fundamentally are. And so we're tuning into that here. And he says, when the activity of the senses has dissolved, then the joy of freedom, the joy of liberation, kaivalya, naturally arises. Now, notice he's using the word for liberation that Patanjali used, which is not the normal word for tantrikas. Tantrikas tend to use moksha and mukti and similar phrases. And here he's using the word kaivalya specifically because he wants to say, hey, we experience also what Patanjali talked about in the Yoga Sutra, but we also go beyond that. We experience more than that in Tantric Yoga. So the word kaivalya in Patanjali has connotations of isolation, having separated oneself from the world of matter energy. And here, it rather has the connotations of freedom and independence, needing nothing outside yourself, which doesn't mean being disengaged from the world or human beings. It's just being free of the sense of need that you are dependent on anything outside of yourself, even though you freely and fully engage uh, with others. So Kaivalya he says, he says the joy of freedom naturally arises when the activity of the senses has dissolved. And this puts us in mind of a verse from the Vigyana Bhairava Tantra, which is verse 136. I'll put it in your comments window. We could consider this maybe a parallel. Uh, parallel passage, where the VBT says, union with pleasure, pain, and so on, always occurs through the doors of perception. With this in mind, let go of attachment to the senses and be at ease in the natural state. Swasta, being healthy and at ease in yourself. It's a great word that uh, is a short, pithy word that is we can't translate in English so well except with the phrase, being at ease and centered in your natural self. This, this, uh, the swasta also means healthy. So this healthy state of being centered in yourself and, and, and just abiding in yourself, being comfortable in your own skin is part of it, swasta. So... Here, you know, remember that the Vigyana Bhairava Tantra 
also has many, many sensual dharanas. It's, a, it's also a text that emphasizes the role of the senses. So again, here we're getting this um, instruction to release the, those uh, sense objects only within, only in context, okay? So th that is to say, having already worked with the senses and nourished them and so on, then there comes a moment of letting all that go. Um, so you know, abiding in oneself. So that's just an example of a parallel passage to this uh, verse 20. So let's then encounter verse 21, and then we'll just do a little meditation, and that'll be our video for this week. So verse 21, which is just sort of more more about the same thing here. Um, where is it? Okay. Tasma chittam samadaya shunye sankalpa varjite nistabdhendriya vrittes tu nirodha samprajayate which means, therefore, having fully withdrawn the mind into the spacious openness, the shunya, which is free of ideation, the activity of the sense faculties is paused in that shunya state and dissolution of the mind is produced. That is to say, there's this cessation or dissolution or coming into total stillness, nirodha, which again is another word from Patanjali. So we really see with this text a kind of reconfiguration of the Patanjalian yoga, the Patanjalian um, method of meditation. Okay, so. Let, let's sort of, you know, get a general sense of what's going on uh, in these verses. Now, he doesn't use the word vairagya here, but certainly it's implied and in the tantric sense of vairagya, which is having satiated the goddesses of the senses, having worshipped the goddesses of the senses, then there's a willingness to let go, a willingness to release, a willingness to turn within. Vairagya in this tantric sense is being interested in what lies within and 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 giving it as much value as what lies in, in the world of the senses, the experiences that, that beckon from the world of the senses. So that's why he says, you know, having fully withdrawn the mind uh, into the void. into the shunya, which again can be translated as spacious openness. Having fully, um, samadaya could also mean having given the mind to the void, having given it over to the void, the, the heart mind, chitta, the locus of both thoughts and emotions, having given it over fully into the spacious openness, which is completely free of ideation, meaning kind of, a, mental image formation. In that condition, then, the activity of the senses is pause. There's this beautiful pause. And then nirodha, the complete stillness arises. That's uh, another way of translating that last verse, number 21. So we can do, a, uh, do that right now. We can do a meditation, but it's important to acknowledge that this doesn't just you know, happen like that for just from hearing those instructions and you just do it. This is really something that clicks for an experienced meditator, whether you're experienced in past lives or in this life. But you can't expect to simply dissolve the mind into the spacious openness, uh, free of all mental image formation uh, at the drop of a hat, unless you can. I mean, maybe 
<laughs> I think it's very rare that you can do that without having previously sort of cultivated um, the ability to be fully present, concentration, meditation techniques of various kinds. But anyway, let's just let's just give it a whirl and see what happens. Okay, so I would invite you to do this in stages. I think it's most successful if you simply do it in stages. So right now, then, you start by becoming aware of the environment around you. You can let your eyes close almost all the way. Doesn't matter if they close all the way or not. And listening to the sounds in your environment, all the sounds, listening to the whole sound field, every subtle sound, as well as the silence underlying all the sounds. You're really just listening. And then pulling your awareness inward a little bit. Feel your whole body. Feel the sensation of the clothes on your body. The air touching your skin, the light touching your eyelids. Feel the whole body. Now, tuning into the energy body, which is also the emotional body, the inner sensation, it's called in Sanskrit, antarasparsha, the energy within the physical body, just tuning into that without thinking about it, it's, it's right there. It's like you're tuning into the aliveness within the body. And then underneath that inner aliveness, that inner energy. There's quiet, stillness. Quiet, still presence. Just letting yourself be that quiet, still presence.
Om. One way to know that you landed there is that you feel, oh, I could just stay here forever. It's just so sweet and perfect and beyond words, but there's a feeling of there's nowhere I need to go. There's no one I need to be. There's nothing I need to do. I can, I just repose. In this awareness. So there's, in a sense, really nothing to it. <laughs> and yet, it's not available for most people or, uh, without some practice. So Maybe you notice that when you land in that quiet, still presence, that it is indeed suffused with this freedom that arises from, or is, is, is a natural result of being free of all need and requirement. Requiring nothing outside this moment, needing nothing outside one, one's own immediate being, one's atma bhava. That's a very powerful feeling, just to, to taste for, for a minute, you know, every day, the aspect of your, your own being and the fundamental being that is free of all need and requirement. It really does transform your relationship to the world. Anyway, I would invite you to contemplate these verses and will continue uh, next week. Let's see, where, where are we? Um, yeah, we'll continue next week with some more practices uh, and some more specific practical things. Uh, this is, you know, pretty much all he has to say about this um, dwelling in the, in the shunya, in the beautiful, spacious openness. Um, at least for now. So nice to be with you all once again as we continue our exploration of the blossoming of awareness by Viranatha. And I look forward to talking to you a little more in the comments. Okay. See you next week. Om.